Hi, welcome to Rachel Rossi Design. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own quilt label. We'll go from sketching and designing to cutting and sewing to actually putting it on your quilt. For a full length video of this tutorial, head to the comments below and hit full length video. It has every single detail and I did not skip any steps. For a short version where you kind of just get the gist of what you need to do, stay tuned and we'll get started on your label. So what I like to do first is just take a look at the quilt, kind of zoom out if you don't have a pattern cover that shows you the whole quilt. Uh, take a picture, zoom it out so that you can just kind of see some of the design motifs that are going on in there. I like it. Um, so let's see what happens if I just add a couple more stripes. Keep it super simple. So maybe I'll do something like that. Um, super easy, three strips. You can handle that. You just made a quilt. We'll do three different fabrics. Maybe a light, medium, and dark, or something with a little variation to it. And then obviously over here is where I'm going to write. And I'll just use a light fabric for that. You can use white. I will probably use this really light gray. Liking it. Um, what you want to do is make sure, as you sketch it all out, that you leave enough room to write. And there's four important things that you want to write. Number one is obviously who the quilt is to. You can do their whole name, nickname, whatever you want to personalize it. The second part is who it's from. If you are married, it is helpful if this is like a family piece to put your maiden name on there. Otherwise, you can just put your first and last name. And if anyone helped you on this quilt, I would definitely suggest also crediting them, especially a long armor. The third thing you're going to want to put on there is your date. Since mine is a baby quilt, I'm going to put his birthday, just to kind of commemorate the date. Otherwise, you can just put 2018 or whatever year it is that you're watching this. And lastly, you're going to put your location. This one seems kind of weird, and it's something I haven't started doing until recently. But the more information that's on a quilt label equals more value for your quilt, if it's ever appraised. Um, and it just adds a little bit of history to the whole thing. So make sure those four things are on your quilt. There's usually a little extra space down here. I often like to do a quote or a Bible verse. Um, a popular one for babies is the Bible verse that says, For this child I have prayed. Um, and that's what I was originally going to do. But now I'm looking at this little circular panda over here. And it might be really cute to stick him right there. Okay, so I've just redrawn kind of an empty template so you guys can see how I do my measurements. I want things to end up about six inches. I'm not gonna go crazy about it. I'm just gonna do whatever feels easiest for me. Um, so if the whole thing is about six inches long and six inches high, I realize I did not draw a square, but that's okay. <laughs> Let's get cutting. We're ready to cut now. I've just got some scrap pieces of my fabrics. They don't have to be fancy. You'll get them nice and straight before you sew them. So the first thing we're going to work on is our 4x3 rectangle for the top. So our design is going to look something like this. And don't worry when it doesn't line up perfectly because we have all those seam allowances to account for. So these pieces are going to look shorter, but that's okay. But it'll look something like this. So let's start sewing. We're going to start on these three little strips. So you're just going to put them right sides together. Match your edges and just use a quarter, a scant quarter inch seam. We are all ironed. So now what we need to do is just put our two last pieces together and then we'll trim them up. Okay, now to finish this off, we're going to trim it down. Again, no one knows how big we wanted this to be, so 
there's not really any rules here. All right, so now that we have that part done, I'm gonna put this right side up. And I'm actually gonna do the wrong side of this just because it's a little bit lighter and I don't want to show through the back. So I will actually do right side up and wrong side together. And we are gonna sew all the way around here. And then I will show you what to do next. Okay, so as you can see, I have sewn along all four corners, all four edges, I should say, over here. So this whole thing is sewn in. So you're probably thinking, what in the world? So what you're gonna do is separate the two layers that you had. You're just gonna make a tiny little hole in the back layer. Make sure it's not your front layer that you just worked so hard on. So you just make a tiny little hole and then make a slit. Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be centered. And before you turn it right side out, just clip those little corners off. It'll give you a nice crisp corner when you're all finished. All right, so now we can go ahead and turn it right side out. to write. I suggest always tracing this, making sure all your words fit before you go for it. All you need here is a micron pen. Let's see, micron, I like the 08 or 05, any smaller and it gets stuck on your fabric. So this is a good size. Again, you can use a Sharpie marker. I like to start in the middle so that I'm sure things are fairly well centered. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's handwritten. So I'm going to start with who it was quilted by, close to the center, and go from there. Your label is ready and ironed and written on you just simply place it in the bottom I like to do the bottom left hand corner of my quilt you can do wherever you'd like though some people like to center it it just depends on what you like and then I just pin it in place you can also use Elmer's glue to kind of keep it in place without poking yourself and then you're just gonna use a hand sewing needle I like to double my thread and just put a little knot at the end Let's see if you can see it just a little knot, doesn't have to be pretty. And I just tuck it up under the back so no one's gonna see it. Come out the side, it's a bad place to start. Let's start on the side. Come out the side, no one's gonna see your yucky little knot. And then you're just gonna hand sew through that, right through where that fold is to keep it, keep it in place. And you just do that all the way around make a little knot to lock it all down and you've got yourself a quilt label. I hope you've enjoyed this post today and I will be doing more posts in the future on hand sewing, on labels, and all other sorts of great quilting tips.